Hello, well, welcome to another installment of I Will Now Turn Aside, um, the Advent Reader put together by the Reverend James Durkitz. Thank you, James, for putting together these readings. Um, it's a, uh, it's, it's, it's been um, fun reading through some of these. Some of my favorite theologians and, uh, and, and poets um, exist inside this reader. Uh, so I'm going to start us off with um, a prayer um, from um, the beginning, found in the daily morning prayer part of this. Um, with, actually, I'll start with the, the psalm, the opening psalm, and we'll work our way through this uh, daily reflection. So let us begin. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Glory be to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I hear that the summary of the law. Hear the teachings of Christ. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, and with all of your soul, and with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. All right. Let's move to this um, teaching from Alexander Smaimon, uh, one of my favorites. I um, got exposed to Alexander Smaimon in uh, seminary. I believe he was Greek Orthodox, um, and he really opened up some key ways of, um, for me, um, in Dr. Nathan Jennings, um, he used uh, Alexander Smaimon to really um, open up how when we're doing worship, how we're participating with the earthly realm in which we exist in and the heavenly realm um, which um, we also exist in. So it, it's kind of this uh, that as Christians we stand in this um, middle ground where we have a foot in each of these realms and uh, we do our best to participate with both and bring in the heavenly into the earthly. Um, so here's a little reading on, on worship. Um, from Alexander Smaimon. A discrepancy has appeared between the base, basic purpose of worship and the way it is understood. While the membership of the church has simply not noticed this discrepancy and the key which is supposedly leads to an understanding of the church's worship actually excludes the possibility of this understanding, no matter how paradoxical it might sound. What obscures the meaning of worship is that it has become for the faithful an object of love indeed almost the sole content of church life. Just what is this new key and how does it fail to correspond to the nature of worship? The fact is that worship has ceased to be understood as a function of the church. On the contrary, the church herself has become to be understood as a function of worship. Christian worship by its nature, structure, and content is the revelation and realization by the church of her own real nature. And this nature is the new life in Christ's union, in Christ with God the Holy Spirit, knowledge of truth, unity, love, grace, peace, and salvation. In this sense, the church cannot be equated or merged with cult. It is not the church which exists for the cult, but the cult for the church, for her welfare, for her growth into the full measure of stature of Christ. Christ did not establish a society for the observance of worship, a cultic society, but rather the church as a way of salvation, as the new life of recreated humankind. This does not mean that worship is secondary to the church. On the contrary, it is inseparable from the church, and without it, there is no church. See, it embodies in worship her participation in God's kingdom, gives us a glimpse of the mystery of the age to come, and expresses her love to the Lord who dwells within her and her communion with the Holy Spirit. In this sense, worship is the purpose of church, but the purpose precisely of the church as the highest and fullest expression and fulfillment of her nature, of her unity and love, of her knowledge and communion with God. So uh, the question that was posed um, is in the absence of worship, um, for such a long time, without sharing communion, as we typically do, what elements of worship are alive in your memory? What images of worship do you draw on from your heart to sustain you? Uh, church very much is about, um, for me, about um, nurturing me 
through the week, even though a lot of times I'm leading it, um, I lean on worship um, to help me keep participating as the best form of human that I can be. Um, I love church. I love starting the worship service um, with the reminder that this is whatever day after Pentecost or Easter or after the Epiphany or Advent. I like breaking from our solar calendar and, and using that liturgical calendar as a reminder of our participation both in the earthly realm but in that heavenly realm. There are so many images from church that um, I draw on. Um, uh, strangely, this week um, I'm missing the peace quite a bit. Um, I've noticed each week I've missed different things. There's been weeks where I've missed the confession. There's certainly been um, months where I've just missed taking communion and communing with one another. But um, the peace, that moment of the service where we um, shake hands and look each other in the eye and say, peace um, be with you. Um, uh, I, I, I don't know. There's just different things in it. And that, um, that little quick moment within, within the service um, feeds me and lifts me up. Um, so uh, I leave it to you. There are, I know that you all have, um, certainly have your, uh, those pieces of worship that you lean in on and, and use throughout the week or those things that we long for that we can't do right now. Um, and I encourage you to write, draw, sing about what what those things are not just um to remind us how much we miss them but maybe to remind us when we do regather um to to in embolden the ways in which we know we're participating um with one another and god when we do it um so uh, this this question posed by alexander schmemon is kind of fun it seems like it's a little bit of a chicken and egg um question, you know, what came first, uh, the chicken or the egg, or what came first, uh, did worship or the church. Um, so it's, it's, I don't know, it's, it's one of those things. But you know, the funny thing with um, a joke, like, or not a joke, but just a, the question of the chicken and egg thing is, um, you can choose not to participate in the, the discussion of what came first, the chicken or the egg. Um, but when you do, and you dive into it and you get playful with it, you find yourself um, participating with whoever you're talking with. Um, and those deep moments of participation can even be about something silly, about what um, came first or a chicken egg, or maybe that's not silly to you, but, um, but, uh, but James also gave me the um, challenge of bringing in a Bad Livers live album um, from 2008 in which they play Crow Black Chicken, an old song, so I thought I'd bring that in to, you know, what came first, uh, worship or the church? Maybe that's an okay thing to hold in tension. It reminds us of um, what is important um, when we do church. So this song here is Crow Black Chicken. I got my handy guitar in my shed. Um, I'll sing you a couple lines from it as you ponder. Um, what came first, the chicken or the egg? What came first, worship or the church? Um, the truth is, uh, neither could exist without the other. So, here we go. Crow black chicken, crow for a day. Crow black chicken, fly away. Crow black chicken, crow for a day. I like chicken pie. Well, the hardest work I ever done is plowing the field to ride. Chicken pie. Crow black chicken, crow for day. Crow black chicken, fly away. Crow black chicken, crow for day. I like chicken pie. Well, I wish I had an old gray house, 18 stories high. And every story in that house was filled with chicken pie. Well, crow black chicken, crow for day. Crow black chicken, I'll fly away. Crow black chicken, for day, I like chicken pie. Thanks for tuning in. Um, James, thanks for putting this together again. Um, I hope uh, y'all have a good week. Um, my prayers out to you. In fact, I'll, I'll end this off with uh, finishing rounding out the worship that is provided within the Advent Reader. Here we go.
at this time you can lift up some of your own prayers for your church, for your family, for our world, for our enemies, for the sick, for those who have died, and for those things you are most grateful for. And praying the words that Jesus taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayer for your church. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to that be of one heart and mind within your holy church, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ be before me, behind me, around me, and within me. Christ to guide me in comfort and triumph and in danger. May Christ lead me out and bring me safely home this day. Amen.